We're talking about the spiritual giant, uh, the person known for his zuhud, known for his worship, known for his knowledge, known for his wisdom, esteemed by scholars, and someone that the great poet Farazdaq, he said this person in his lifetime was more revered, more respected than the Khalifa of the Muslims, who was actually uh, Hisham ibn Abdul Malik. We're talking about Zayn al Abidin, Ali ibn Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. He was spared at Karbala. So we, be, we kind of ended last when we we're talking about Hussein, you know, his father. We ended at Karbala. Zain al Abidin, he was spared because of his aunt Zainab throwing herself you know, on him and saying, If you want to kill him, you will have to kill me. He was, he was spared. And then he was, he was marched to Damascus and then he was making his way back from Damascus to Kufa and he was giving speeches to the everyone that he encountered stating his father's intentions. I mean, sometimes when you hear these stories, you have to allow yourself to really be kind of, at least historically, you know, awed by these people, right? He's in a state of mourning. He's in a state of law. He just lost 17 members of Ahlul Bayt, of his family. He just lost his father. And in that state, of course, as he is traveling back to Kufa, he's meeting people saying, what? Let us foment rebellion now. Let's do it. And he's saying, no, no, my father desired peace. However, when he made it back um, to Kufa, one of the interesting things about uh, Zayn al Abidin is that he was uh, very sad. He would often mourn. It's mentioned that whenever food was placed in front of him, he would, he would weep. And once he was being presented with food and they said, isn't it time for you to taste happiness again and to let go of your, your mourning? And he, I mean, look at how rooted they were in the Quran. They used the Quran to explain reality. He said, Yaqub, the prophet, السلام, he had 12 sons and one of them disappeared and he cried so much that he lost his sight. I lost my father and 17 members of my household. How will I ever taste sweetness again? And this is someone that of course close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he allowed himself to mourn. The Prophet وسلم, had an entire year of his life that we call Amul Huzn, right? The people of God mourn. Another thing I think that's very interesting about Zayn al Abidin was that he is one of the, the Ahlul Bayt that is respected as a scholar of Islam. He was esteemed, and Sunni Muslims will find this impressive, he was esteemed by Sa'id ibn al Musayyib, or you can say Musayyib, right? One of the Fuqaha of Medina, Shihab al Dina Zuhri, radiallahu anhuma also esteemed Zayn al Abidin. In fact, it's mentioned in the sources that it was Shihab al-Din al-Zuhri that gave him the name Zayn al Abidin, which in Arabic refers to what? The beauty of the worshippers. You know, another thing mentioned about Zayn al Abidin, uh, Ali ibn Hussein, was his, his great zuhud, right? That he did not love the dunya. It's mentioned that after Abdullah ibn Zubair passed away, that there was some disagreement about in our allegiance to Ahlul Bayt, should it be to Muhammad ibn al Hanafi, al Nafs al Zakiyya, or should it be to Zayn al Abidin? Kind of who is the Sayan, who is the leader of Ahlul Bayt right now? And they said, well, let's go to the Black Stone and let's, let's, let's pray for a sign. And so Muhammad ibn uh, al Hanafi, al Nafs al Zakiyya, he prayed and nothing happened. And then Zayn al-Abidin prayed and the black stone uh, is reported to have moved or something happened that indicated to them that the leadership of Ahlul Bayt is with Zayn al-Abidin. And then they said that Zayn al-Abidin accepted that leadership and then went back uh, and lived his life without making any, you know, kind of like, I have a position of leadership. There's no just this abject love of leadership. You know, something else that I think is, is, is noteworthy uh, uh, about Zayn al-Abidin uh, a statement of his about Zuhd 
uh, that I also was able to uncover. He said, if you want to know what Zuhud is, it is not crying, not being disappointed over anything that you don't have in this dunya. And it's about not boasting, not being proud of anything that you do. What a statement. Thinking about that in our time, anything that has missed me, anything that I don't have in this dunya, I'm not longing for it. Anything that I do have in this dunya, I don't have excessive pride about it. Right? This was Zain al-Abidin. You know, one of the things that is uh, known uh, about Zain al-Abidin, uh, one of his virtues, one of his mazaya, one of his distinguishing characteristics uh, was his generosity. And it's mentioned, I mean, think about I mean, this is something that when I think about it, it really captivates uh, and also motivates me. They say he would go at night, veil himself, go to the families of people that were known to be indigent, knock on their doors, give the sadaqah, and then run off in the middle of the night. So combining the virtue of aiding and assisting your brother with the virtue of not humiliating your brother. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said, the upper hand is better than the lower hand, meaning the hand that gives is better than the hand that, that receives. Right, you had many members of the community, they would give the sadaqah, place it on the bottom, and let the person taking it, take it from the top. Because not in my giving, am I in any way superior to you. And you're taking from me and giving me this opportunity to obey Allah, you're superior to me. If we're talking about the Ahlul Bayt, right, the people of the household of the Prophet ﷺ, Zain al-Abidin, among all of the people of Ahlul Bayt in this generation, you know, like his grandfather, known as a, a spiritual giant. And that's, that's really remarkable because you, some people, when they're given, when they enjoy great status, you know, it's almost a little bit of, uh, it's some permission to be a little bit lax. The status is doing the work for me, right? But in spite of his great status, he still exerted himself you know, spiritually, and that became something he was very well known for.